And we are following some breaking news this morning out of the University of Minnesota's Duluth campus. In about an hour, classes will start as planned after a campus safety alert was sent out to students. Police now tell us a man claimed he was suicidal, had a weapon, and was trying to get into one of the medical buildings on campus. Minutes later, students received a safety alert and were told to either leave or shelter in place. Around 10 p.m., authorities were able to arrest the man and found out he was not armed. He was taken in for evaluation and charges are pending this morning. Now here's your morning rush. Scary moments for residents in White Bear Township after SWAT teams found two men dead inside a home. Shots were fired at a home on Centerville Road just before 3.30 yesterday afternoon. A SWAT team was called to help after deputies learned a shooter was still inside with several other people. After a three hour standoff, authorities made it inside where they found two men shot to death. No one else was hurt. A New Year's Day fire left a Ramsey family homeless. Now fire officials are investigating what caused it. The fire broke out early yesterday morning at the home on Cobalt Street. The three people in the home got out safely, but the house is completely destroyed. Less than three years since its opening, U.S. Bank Stadium is set to get upgrades to its turf. Our news partner, Minnesota Public Radio, reports the Minnesota Sports Facilities Authority is looking for bids for a new artificial field. The existing turf, which you can see being installed in this 2016 video, cost the stadium $1.5 million. The winning bid is expected to be picked by March, with installation in May ahead of the new Viking season. Well, today President Trump plans to sit down with congressional leaders from both parties for the first time since the government uh, closed nearly two weeks ago. House Democrats, who will take control of the lower chamber tomorrow, announced a proposal on Monday to reopen the government, but it did not include the $5 billion in funding for the president's border wall. Now, this ongoing budget showdown in Washington has decision makers on edge here in Minnesota, especially those in the state's budget office. Minnesota gets about a billion dollars each month from the federal government, and some of that money comes automatically. But certain funding requires approval from federal workers, and those workers aren't working during the shutdown. That could mean delays in FEMA funding, road construction projects, and traffic safety programs. The state's budget commissioner hopes for a quick resolution, but says he's discouraged by Washington's lack of progress in these negotiations. Alicia? 604, time for Digital Dive this morning. Well, earlier this week on Monday, Massachusetts State Senator Elizabeth Warren making a very big announcement and a big step towards the 2020 presidential run. She shared this video on Twitter saying why she's throwing her hat into the ring. Here's a little bit of what she said. This dark path doesn't have to be our future. We can make our democracy work for all of us. We can make our economy work for all of us. We can rebuild America's middle class, but this time we got to build it for everyone. Now that video went on for four and a half minutes. You can watch it. I shared it on my Twitter page. Uh, meanwhile, Warren's making her way towards the Midwest this weekend. Yeah, her first stop in Iowa, launching an exploratory committee for presidents. She's making her first trip to the state that begins the Democratic presidential nominating process. In fact, she's the first prominent Democrat taking that leap. Now, right now, there are three other people with their or three in total with their hat in the ring. We have uh, Housing Secretary, former Housing Secretary Julian Castro, outgoing Maryland Representative John Delaney, and now, of course, Elizabeth Warren. So initial reaction after she posted that video, uh, of course, you can see both sides. Yeah, the first person saying this, uh, thank you for running as we need smart, competent people like you, Mrs. Warren. I hope you'll be the first woman president of the United States. And on the other side of things, Mary saying I admire you and think you're awesome, but please don't run. I don't, so, I don't get that. She admires her, thinks she's awesome, but don't maybe run. Maybe she doesn't think she's right for the job. I yeah. think some I Democrats are more. worried. <laughs> yeah, I think they're worried too many people are going to run. You yeah. know, and then it's, they're going to be attacking yeah. each other, and I think that's a fear yeah. for a lot of people. I just people. need one more sentence to Mary's tweet to totally make sense of where she's coming from. <laughs> A little more explanation. You get 140 characters, incomplete. use them. I'm just not um, ready for more political ads starting right away. It's no, gonna happen. no, it's going to happen soon. All right, Tracy, what's the one thing we need to know about the weather? Bundle up this morning. It is still very chilly out there. Starting off the morning in the single digits, wind chills sub-zero. A few flakes this afternoon, but a dusting at most. And then we're moving into a quiet weather setup with temperatures on the rise. Sounds good. Now is the time to get rid of your Christmas tree, and starting today, there's an easy way to do it. Kaya Edwards is showing us how. She's live in Northeast Minneapolis. Hey, Kaya. 
Hey, good morning. So if you live in Minneapolis, you should get your tree outside by six in the morning on your regular garbage collection day. And then you should place it alongside your regular garbage cart. But if you're in an apartment like this, a trash room like this, you might be wondering, uh, there's no room. There's contact management. They should be able to set you straight. But I want to talk about St. Paul because the instructions there are a little more specific. Yeah, they're saying don't leave it upright in the snow and do not just have it lean in against any of your carts. No, instead they want you to lay it down next to your garbage cart. All right, don't let it touch the cart. All right, now with the new year, St. Paul has some new pricing when it comes to bulky items, but uh, you don't have to pay when it comes to your Christmas tree. That is, as long as you get it outside between today and the 15th. But heads up, this service is only limited to one tree per household. If you do have more trees, a fake tree, or if you have a tree that is larger than six feet long, well, then they have to be collected as bulky items. And you should just call your garbage hauler to schedule the time after the 15th. All right, so right now on our website, we have more information about where you can drop off your tree. We've got some other options for you if you don't live in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and you can check it out right now on care11.com sunrise. Back to you. Hmm, good tips. Good tips. One tree per household. I know, the guy with 50, yes. think, thankfully they're fake. He's out right? of luck. So he's okay. Well, the Vikings' Kyle Rudolph is kicking off 2019 with important work off the football field. Tonight, the Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year nominee is hosting a fundraiser to benefit Kyle Rudolph's End Zone, a special area for patients and their families at the U of M Masonic Children's Hospital is designed to help children and teens find a place to play, relax, engage in healing therapies, and socialize. Tonight's fundraiser is from 6 to 9 at P.S. Steak in Minneapolis. This is a brand new restaurant not even open until the 7th. Tickets are $182 a person with all the proceeds benefiting the end zone. Admission includes hors d'oeuvres, wine, beer, and cocktail samples. Still ahead, a chance to have your student loans forgiven. The three things you should know before applying. And a little girl falls into a rhinoceros exhibit why many people are now blaming the zoo. I need your help with my latest photo stop. Do you know the story behind this tree in St. Paul? It's creating quite the mystery on social media. We do have our first crash of the morning up near Moundsview. 35W southbound at County Road I blocking the left lane, causing some bumper to bumper traffic. I'm going to have your drive times coming up here in a little bit.